Hi, this is Reg Atwal and welcome to another episode on book videos. I know it's been a while for those of you who've been watching all the other book videos, been busy with some of our other shows, Family Business Legacies, Next Gen Entrepreneurs, Family Business Experts, so don't forget to watch some of those on the channel. But the book for today is this one, Who Are You? A Success Process for Building Your Life's Foundation. Here's the author, Stedman Grain. For those of you who don't know, he is a best-selling author. He's published nine books. This one in particular was published in 2005. It's a very short book, 111 pages, which I love. You know, you could read this in literally half an hour for your uh, a fast reader, maybe an hour, hour and a half if you're a slow reader, but it, it's a really simple book. Now, for those of you who have not heard of Stedman Graham, he's quite famous for something else. Um, he is also the life partner, okay, of Oprah Winfrey, and he dedicates this particular book to her, and I'm going to kick off by just reading what he's got here. He says, to Oprah, a person who knows who she is and who has helped me to know who I am. I marvel that you're the same whether you're talking to the President of the United States or to a homeless person on the street. You don't change. That's true authenticity. And that's the defining example of this book. You know, it's titled, Who Are You? And now if you were to answer that question, and I'm asking you, who are you? What would be your response? If you were to ask the same question to your family members, people in your leadership team, who are you? What would they say? Would it be some type of label? Is it just our name? What's our identity? Who are we on the inside, outside of this flesh? Okay, and what you see uh, and what others see. So I think the book is very powerful because it's quite deep and goes into a lot of subject matter around understanding who you are. And I've got about five or six uh, bits that I want to cover in the book today. So introduction, he talks about uh, a couple of really good quotes from Gandhi as well. You must become the change we seek in the world. He says, everywhere you turn, there are messages about success. As if there's one ultimate indicator or destination point that everyone who makes it reaches. In truth, there are probably millions of definitions of success. I really like that because it's true. Everyone has a different version, in my opinion. He goes on to say they range from tangibles such as a big salary, fancy house, expensive car or corner office to intangibles such as happiness, freedom, good health and family. There are also some that are little of both, such as education level, rank or title, feeling significant. Have you ever thought about what your definition of success is? It could very well be different from what it was 10 years ago or even 10 months ago. And maybe for those of you watching this right now in the month of May 2020 during the corona crisis, COVID-19 crisis, Maybe success has changed for you just in the last few months. And he says it may change in the days to come. But please take a moment to really think about what it means to you. So that's the first thing I wanted to leave you from Stedman's book, which is, you know, what is your definition of success? Because it's worth defining that. Further on into the book, he talks about his nine steps for success. Uh, once you start breaking it down, uh, he talks about nine areas. I'm not going to go through all nine in detail, but I will pick out a few just to make sure that you get a couple of tips from this book video today. So step one, he says, you know, check your ID. But he says in the nine steps, there's some key questions that you need to answer and suggestions that can help you. So step one, check your ID. Before you decide what you want out of your life, you must first understand who you are, what the influences on your life are, and why you think and act the way that you do. Self-awareness is where success begins. It's difficult to understand the world and how you respond to it until you first know yourself. What are your strengths? That is, what moves you forward? What are your weaknesses? What holds you back? What are your patterns of behavior? What are your passions? Sometimes the biggest obstacles to success are those that you unconsciously put in your own path, such as past hurts, business or career downfalls, 
and negative attitudes, and they hold you back. Learn from the bad experiences and failures and let them go. And then he continues to talk about, in step one, other things you can do to check what he calls your identity. Step two, create your own vision, realize and exploring your real dreams and aspirations. Having a vision will help you on your journey. Step three, develop your travel plan. I like that. Uh, if you're going to fulfill your vision for a better life, you need to create a plan of action. When you begin to work towards your goals by doing so, you assert power over your life. You know what you are, what you're going to do, and how you're going to get there. So he refers to that as building a travel plan. Step four, master the rules of the road. Characteristics he talks about is honesty, hard work, determination, and a positive attitude to get through and achieve that travel plan. Step five, step into the outer limits. In order to grow, you must first leave your comfort zone by confronting your fears and taking risks. Fear of the unknown is one of the greatest obstacles that you'll face taking this journey. So key things to remember, he says, risk is a natural part of life. Staying the same as standing still. Change growth means some level of risk. Step six, pilot the seasons of change. Step seven, build your dream team. Step eight, win by a decision. And step nine, commit to your vision. So again, maybe check out the book on, on Amazon, uh, Who Are You? by Stedman Graham, you know, and, and, and read it yourself, okay? Find out what he's talking about. Go into a bit more depth with those other steps because there's a lot of great learning here. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, later on in the book where he talks about the world we live in, He's got this subsection of that chapter called The Power of Relevancy. Uh, and I've been a big fan of anyone, any one of these books behind me in my library where they talk about relevancy. I think today's world, I think there's a video I saw on YouTube recently where someone said, is this the time to be a generalist or is this the time to be a specialist and focus on relevancy in niche areas? And the summary of that video is it's all about niche areas. If you look at my channel, even though I inspire lots of people from different age groups, essentially my niche is family businesses and dealing with entrepreneurs. So if you're one of them, you're in the right place. For, for others, you've probably just found me by watching some other video and hopefully you'll get inspired and get some ideas. But you've got to know your audience. You've got to know who you're being relevant for and to. So he talks about the power of relevancy. One of the reasons our school systems are not up to pies because they tend to miss the connection between young people and their personal development. It doesn't make sense, but the educational system, which can be the greatest influence in our lives, uh, as he talks about, for positive change, no matter what our circumstances are, is one of the many institutions that actually discourages, I'll pause here, discourages us from thinking. And can you imagine the relevancy of what he's saying in this book? And he published this in 2005, 15 years ago. And look at what's going on around the world. Billions of children have been at home during lockdown around the world who have not been able to go to school. And there's a realization right now, which is what value were they really getting from school? Um, because the parents are now doing the homeschooling. So essentially, he says here, much of what I believe is wrong with the state of education, and he's not talking just about America, where more money is spent per pupil than in almost any other nation, and he's talking about America now, is that it's driven by labels of grades. When grades or scores are of primary importance versus relevant learning and thinking, the natural result is that teachers begin to teach to tests, teach to tests. Consequently, students memorize, spit back the information on an exam or essay, and then quickly forget it. And then he carries on in the book talking about the culture of cheating and how really this entire educational system is flawed. What do you think? Do you think the educational system is flawed? If you've got to this part of the video, you know, hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying this. But more importantly, go to the comment section and give us your opinion on what's happening with the educational system. And I'd be curious to know what, what you think. So that, 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 that's an entire 
uh, four or five pages to read up on when he talks about relevance. He talks about the entire education system. Later on, halfway through the book, he talks about the different stages of life. And he walks you through different areas that you need to analyze, chunking all aspects of your life journey, asking the right questions to discover a bit more about who you are, and in our company, RTS Global Partners and the Family Business Academy, we work with hundreds of family businesses around the world, and we've got our own toolkit. Uh, it's, it's linked to something called DNA profiling. If you want to know more, I'll make sure it's in the description section below, where you can find out more about that toolkit. But what we do when we're interviewing family members and leadership teams in family businesses, we actually look at people's past from the day that they were born and break it down into seven-year chunks. And it's really great because Stedman's talking about the same thing. I remember reading this book about 10 years ago and having a chance to reread it just for this book video has reminded me that there's so much uh, uh, integration with the work that we're doing and relevancy with what he's talking about in the book. So very briefly, if you're doing this exercise for yourself, he's talking about your youth. So really break down years of one to four early childhood. You know, if you can remember some things, write it down. Maybe you can go to your parents, grandparents, guardians, aunt, aunties, uncles who remember you know, that aspect of your life and you can ask them key questions about your early childhood. What were you like? What did you used to do? Uh, fifth to 13, five to 13 uh, age range, elementary school. What sort of things did you enjoy doing? What did you like? What did, did you dislike? The same questions will continue for high school, age 14 to 17. So that's youth. And then he talks about youth adulthood. So the stages would be 18 to 22, uh, vocational school, college, select your career, your occupation, what happened in your life. 23 to 25, your first job possibly. What was your first job? Who influenced you? What did you like? What didn't you like? What came natural to you? What frustrated you? These are all important questions to, to ask. 26 to 30, gain real world knowledge, invest in yourself. And then section three, adulthood, 31 to 40, advanced career, develop expertise and relationships. 41 to 50, apply expertise in your career and your community. 51 to 55, enjoy lifestyle, mature career. 56 to 65, legacy established, retirement. And then four, older adult uh, adulthood uh, is around 66 to 75, continued contributions in life. 76 to 84, elder states person and 85 plus enjoy what you've got in your rest of your life so he breaks this down in detail talking about different things that you can assess look at it's a really great probably 10 15 pages in the book that i think will add value to anyone if you get a chance to grab hold of the full book later on in the book this is one of my favorite parts of the book he talks about in the in the chapter what do you want to be Okay, what do you want to be? There's a section here where he says, write, writing your autobiography in reverse. So think about that for a second. You know, how many of you have read great autobiographies? It's already happened. It's the past for someone's life. Imagine a writing your autobiography in reverse. So you're writing your autobiography of what it would be like in 50 years time and looking back. And now you're writing that chapter. And working your way back to the present day, I love that analogy. I think it's brilliant. He says, have you ever thought about writing your memoirs? You don't have to be famous to do so. Everyone has a good story. I enjoy reading biographies because I'm always uplifted by the accomplishments of others. This inspiration could lead to attempt things I might otherwise not have or can even reshape my vision of myself. As you consider your own abilities and desires in the light of what others with similar interests have accomplished, you can refine your vision, gain new energy for achieving it. But now, I'm going to ask you to do something a little unusual. Still, think about writing that autobiography, but do it in reverse. Visualize yourself in your later years, sitting back comfortably and reminiscing about your amazing life. Really allow yourself to consider the great possibilities for yourself in detail. Picture the type of home you're living in and what your surroundings look like. And I would add to that, because I'm going to pause there. For those of you running family businesses, we talk about something called VIP, Vision, Intention, Purpose, one of our toolkits. 
And I think it relates to this because if you're going to write your family business autobiography, okay, you know, imagine that in reverse. 50 years from now, where will your family business be? What would it look like? How many people have you impacted around the world? What products or services are you offering? Uh, what milestones have been achieved? And that could be a great way of also building your vision. So really like to thank Stedman for, for mentioning that. Here's a formula that he's got later in the book, towards the end now of this, uh, of this great book of only 111 pages. He's got this equation called energy in focus. Energy plus alignment plus time equals maximum potential. So I'll say that again, energy in focus equation, energy plus alignment. So imagine all your energy, I, I refer to it as think, feel, do, you know, your chakras, your energy, who you are, plus alignment, plus time equals maximum potential. Energy, he says, is just a major force in our lives, literally. From the cellular level on up, we're a collection of electric chemical reactions. In physics, energy is the capacity of doing work and overcoming resistance. It's not something we can really witness, although we can certainly see the effects of it. But it's something we definitely feel and sense. We often think of energy as this precious resource and wish we had an unlimited supply. Well, instead of looking for outside sources such as food, vitamin supplements or caffeine, we can energize ourselves from within. Part of learning to understand who we are lies in gaining an awareness of what gives you energy, both positive and negative, be it people, situations, or things. The challenge is in turning negative energy into positive energy to keep up your momentum. When you generate positive energy, you're able to align it with what you enjoy doing and what has positive consequences. Then over time, you'll have an equation for maximum performance that builds upon itself. And then he carries on talking about momentum. He said, by the same token, your mood can change for the better in an instant. You receive a welcome phone call, unexpected compliment. You find a great parking space. You can catch the bus just as it pulls up, pulls away. Your favorite song comes on the radio. And what he's talking about here is momentum and good luck and good things start, good things start happening because of your vibration, what I call vibration, but he refers to energy plus alignment plus time equal, equals maximum potential. So on that note, I want to thank uh, Stedman for writing this book, Stedman Graham. He's the author of nine books. Some of the other books are You Can Make It Happen and Teens Can Make It Happen, which are New York Times bestsellers. He's also the chairman and CEO of a company called S. Graham and Associates, which is a management and marketing consulting firm. So that's me done for this book video. Hit the subscribe button. Please watch some of the other shows uh, on, on the channel. Uh, leave some comments. Hit the like button. It helps us with our al algorithms to reach more people. And appreciating you watching up to now, until the end of the video. See you again soon. And stay safe during the coronavirus uh, pandemic right now. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.